Hello everybody who is watching by this program Messenger of Hope. We know that there are a lot of people out there, especially in this time, who are sick, illness, maybe Corona, maybe something else. But we want you to know that there is a God that can heal, save and deliver. And he loves you and he sees you and he wants to know you and maybe you know him already then we just want to encourage you with this program that God also wants to touch you in this program for today we have Christina from Indonesia and she has an amazing testimony about God healing her from cancer Christina welcome and thank you so much that you are in this program and wants to share this Testimony. Christina, I'm really happy that you are here in uh, in the program. Where are you from? I'm from Indonesia mm -hmm. originally, but now I live in Singapore. And you are a mother or are you working? I'm currently uh, studying in Bible school. Yes. Yeah, I'm not officially working, but I do... My family do have business in Indonesia. Yeah. What kind of business do they have? Oh, uh, we have supermarket. We have ice cream factory. I, I love yeah. ice cream. So. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Christina, we heard that you have a wonderful and great testimony. What was your problem? Yes. So, in 2015, yes. I was diagnosed with uh, leukemia. How did you become to know that you were sick? In the beginning of 2015, I yeah. started having like hip back pain. Yes. And then like, it's like somebody was punching me from the inside. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then my platelet was low as well. Yeah. And so doctors in Indonesia at that time didn't know what kind of sickness. Yeah. And they thought it was dengue it was it was something else basically yeah. yeah and so my parents brought me to singapore at that yeah. time but the doctors in singapore at that time also said that oh it's it's nothing you know you're okay it's nothing you're just thinking too much yeah. uh, too much stress and then yeah. just send me back to indonesia oh, but wow. then the pain it's like come and go, come and go. Yeah. So it was quite frustrating for about three months. The doctor mm. said that maybe you have nothing, it's only stress. Yeah. So yeah. is it a common sickness in Indonesia to have this kind of illness? Not really, not really actually. Even in my family, there's no um, history of cancer. Yeah. So in April, yeah, uh, my parents brought me back to Singapore because we really didn't know what happened, but the pain was just still there. Yeah. I kept coming in back to hospitals. And then in April, 5th April, yeah. 2015, yeah. I still remember that day. Yeah. It was Easter, Easter Sunday. Yes. I went to church. Mm -hmm. And then um, at that time, I didn't know SOS yet. Okay. Uh, well, what is uh, SOS? Well, SOS is uh, Sahabat Orang Sakit. So basically, if translated in English, it's the uh, Friends of the Sick. So Friends? it's a ministry yes. for, uh, for people who are sick in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I didn't know SOS yet, but I went to this church. And then the pastor... When the pastor was preaching, I really felt like God gave me this rema yeah. uh, from Psalm 91, 16. Mm -hmm. With long life, I will satisfy you and yeah. show you my salvation. Oh, wow. And that first really spoke to me. And I asked God, like, God, why are you giving me this first? Am mm -hmm. I going to die? Mm hmm yeah, I asked God that, but I didn't know what was happening yet. And then at the same night that I got that first, yes, I started having that pain again, but the pain was just the worst. 
it's still worse compared to the previous one. Yeah. And then until until I was shaking because I was holding the pain, I was shaking so much. Yeah. And then my parents brought me to uh, ER, emergency room. And then I kept screaming. I kept screaming. I asked for morphine at that time. Yeah. And then yeah. long story short, the doctor decided to take my bone marrow. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, I was bleeding so much as well, so they only got a small bone marrow, but then they decided to check with it anyway. And a few days later, the result came out. Yeah. And then the result was leukemia. And well, what were you thinking at that time? Uh, because you had uh, the you had a Bible scripture was was saying that you will have lo- long life and. And yeah. now you hear that you have leprosy. So what did they do with you? I asked the doctor, right? I asked the doctor, the, doc, the same doctor that said yeah. to me, you are okay, you're just thinking too much. And okay. then I asked that doctor, doc, how much times do I, do I have wow. if I didn't get treatment on time? Mm-hmm. And then the doctor said, only two weeks. So... So only two weeks, right? I was, at the time, I was like, oh, my God, only two weeks. Yes. And then I cried. I cried. But then I remember Psalm 91, 16. Yes. With long life, I will satisfy you. Yeah. So at that time, I know, even though I cried, but there is peace. There was peace in my heart, knowing that, okay, God told me that I'm going to live a long yeah. life. Yeah. And so even the doctor said that I only have two weeks or, you know, doctor always say the bad things, right? Yes. But then I just hold on to God's promises that I will live. I will not die of cancer. Christina, you were tell- telling me about uh, transplantation. So uh, what did they do with you? So basically transplant, uh, bone marrow transplant has four ways. Mm-hmm. So the first one Uh, You can use your sibling's blood. And then the second one, you can use adult's blood, other people's blood. And then the third one, you use your own. And then the fourth one, you use um, from baby cord blood. So it is a kind of uh, blood transfusion. Yeah, Yeah. it's a kind of blood transfusion. But do they change all the blood or do they change a part of, of the blood? They change all the blood, oh, I wow. believe. Because last time my blood type was A, ah. now I became O. So the doctor told me that I will be in isolation room for about two months. Yes. But then after 21 days, I was out from the hospital. So I recovered pretty quickly by the grace of God. Amen. So when you were in isolation, you had no visitors and nobody was coming? No. Only my parents allowed. What did you do in those two months? Oh, yeah. I was only listening to sermons online. I I brought my laptop and then I play on YouTube. You know, I play uh, Christian songs, worship songs, and then I play sermons. At that time, I wasn't able to hold, even to hold tissue I yeah. my hands were shaking yeah so I couldn't I couldn't hold on to even my phone because it's just felt too heavy I was like shaking all the time uh, Christina do you believe that uh, listening to the worship songs and to sermons that it was a key to receive healing it builds your faith it's it's I mean the, even my room feels like even the nurse also said that when I come into your room, it's it's like light, you know, because my room, yeah. like they feel, they said to me, like it's it's very, like it's not dark like in other rooms. <laughs> it is a great testimony for all, only that all, already that part of two months and this, the the nurse coming in and saying, "Wow, if I enter into your room, it's so light. There is such a great atmosphere." SOS team also came to pray for me, even though they didn't enter my room. They prayed from outside. So 
they, I mean, the, the nurses know, know who they are. How did you uh, got in uh, contact with SOS? Uh, basically, Pastor Stephanus reached out to my mom. Mm-hmm. So they met accidentally as well in the lift. And ah. then Pastor, yeah. So Pastor Stephanus, because Pastor Stephanus always go to the hospitals and yeah. then uh, like looking for patients to pray for. Yeah. And so he met my mom in the lift and then uh, long story short, he came to to visit me. Yeah. Even though outside my room. And then you received your healing. How, how are you now? How are you feeling? Are you ever feeling sick or do you have symptoms uh, for your sickness or everything is really gone? Everything is gone. Wow. Yeah, everything is good now. Amazing how God uh, heals you through the music, through worship. And, and through sermon. Holy Communion as well. Even until today, I still take Holy Communion every day. All right. So there is power in Holy Communion. I believe that when we remind ourselves with Jesus' body and to to heal us and his blood to redeem us you know just yeah. it will have a really great power in our lives i mean even though i did not get the you know the suddenly the cancer was gone like i had to go through the chemotherapy i even had to go through transplant as well yeah it's harder it's harder to have transplant yeah compared to just chemotherapy. But then I really felt God was with me. I even gained weight during chemo. And so I got to, I got more strength, you know, to, to fight. Because of your faith. Yeah, I yeah. believe, I believe wow. that so. And of course, the confession of your mouth that you were saying, um, uh, I will live, Psalm 91 verse 16, I will live a long life. It is, it is really important for, for us, you know, when we are sick, we just focus on Jesus and what Jesus has done on the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, that by your stripe, we are healed. We need to hold on to that. And I always tell uh, other patients as well, uh, you don't need to Google about anything. So whatever you hear from doctor, you just okay and you just no need to google about anything yes and just immerse yourself in god's word so if uh, you say it is very important yes you listen to the doctor what he says but then you go into the word of god and into the presence of god and you focus on jesus and not on what the doctor has said yeah, yeah. That is wow. really important. There are, there are people watching, there are a lot of people watching who are maybe having sickness and maybe the doctor told them also, uh, you have to live three months or only two months, or you have cancer, you have two more in your head. And what do you want to say to them? I just want to say that, you know, just focus on what Jesus has done on the cross. I think it's really important to, to just see you know, you see what, what Christ has bore on the cross. I mean, he was, he was beaten, he was crushed, he was whipped. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he went through all that to purchase your healing. You know, just believe that by your stripe you are healed. Keep holding on to that promise. Wow. And don't Google anything about your sickness. <laughs> So if you feel sick, don't go on your laptop or tablet. Don't go to Google, doctor.com, but you go to Dr. Jesus. Amen. Wow, that's an amazing uh, testimony, Christina. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, with me. I'm already blessed with it and the viewers at home who are watching or maybe you are watching in a restaurant or in a cafeteria. I don't know, wherever you are, know that there is a God that loves you, that sees you, that knows your problem and that he wants to interfere in your life. He wants to heal you and touch you. He wants to be there in your need. But you have to allow him to do that because God is not a burglar. God is a loving father and he cares for you. And he is asking you right now, wherever you are watching from, right now, he is asking you, 
May I interfere in your life. May I heal you. May I touch you. And if you say yes, then God is there for you. And he will uh, give healing or he will give the solution that you desperately need in your distress, in your adversary. Amen. If you believe that, then God is there for you. Christina, again, thank you so much for being in this program. You know, there are so many stories in the Bible, so many testimonies in the Bible about Jesus healing people. And one of those stories was Jesus healing a woman who had an issue of blood. For 40 years, she had menstruation. And she was thinking, if I can only touch the cloth the, of Jesus Christ, I will be healed. And she was pushing through the crowds of people who were surrounding Jesus. And when she was touching the hem of his garment, she received healing. She received healing for her sickness. It was gone immediately. And you know, you need to be determined to receive your healing or to receive a solution for your problem. And believe that the God who did it for Christina, believe that the God of the Bible who did it for so many people will also do it for you. God loves you. He does not want to punish you. He doesn't want to blame you or give you guilt. The only thing that he wants to do is love you and heal you and restore your life. Amen? Well, maybe you are watching for the first time to this program and you do not really know who God is and who Jesus is. Let me tell you very shortly, Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he laid down his godliness, came to earth as a human being to restore the relation between God and mankind. And he did it for you and for me. We should have been punished for our sin. But because Jesus gave his life, he was hanging on the cross. He took that punishment upon him. That's why the road to God the Father is open to us. And he wants to do something amazing, something great in your life. He wants to heal you, touch you, deliver you, give you a good life, give you restoration. And you know, the only thing you have to do is to receive Jesus Christ in your life. You only have to say the following prayer. Lord Jesus, I was watching this program. I believe in you. I believe that you came to this earth and took my punishment and that I can receive forgiveness for my sin. And Jesus, right now, I ask you, forgive my sin. I give my life in your hands. It is yours. And I shall live the life that you have in mind for me. Amen. If you have done that, if you have prayed this prayer, I say congratulations. And write us an email or call us. The information to do so is under in the screen. And we really encourage you to do that so that we can help you to continue to grow in the new life that you have started. And also when you are sick or you have other problems, then write us an email or call us at this number that is under in the screen so that we can reach out to you and help you and tell you more about the Jesus that can heal you and that can help you and that is truly the solution for your problem. Amen. Thank you for watching. I hope you will be watching next time. The next Saturday at 8 o'clock, we will be back with another program and with another amazing testimony about what God is doing in the lives of people today. God bless you this week. Tell your friends, tell your family about this program so that they also will watch and will receive healing in their lives. Amen. God bless you and hopefully see you back next week.